Ed DeRosa with you from Horse Racing Nation to preview the Tampa Bay Derby. And I am joined by the man who only goes by Nico. Nico, yep. And before we get to the <laughs> Tampa Bay Derby, everyone wants to know, who are you wearing? The only uh, designer I wear, Stock the Pace. It's the only one you need. Do you yeah. also, uh, you wear his stuff. Do you, do you smell his? Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Don't need to get it's lost. Chemicals? No. Yeah, okay. No. So uh, the, the, you, we'll, we'll pass a we'll pass a test after handicapping <laughs> the Tampa Bay Derby. Are you going out to Oldsmeyer this weekend? We are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think we're actually sitting in the box with the uh, representatives from the Daily Racing Forum. So that okay might be fun or or not. <laughs> well, uh, I think you're going to see uh, not, not to bury the lead here, but I think you're going to see a legitimate. Kentucky Derby contender. Uh, I am, I'm higher on tap at Trice maybe than Forte from a classic standpoint. Mm. Um, you know, now's the time to put up the, let's see, two turn debut, stakes debut. I'm looking at Brisnet though, Nico. I know you use some other tools mm. as well. Uh, this horse is just unquestionably faster than the others, but stakes, he has to prove it. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, not a race I'm excited to bet um, <laughs> because of that. You know, uh, I don't, you know, you you look for weak favorites uh, or if you know something the public doesn't. And um, I don't, he's a horse you can't throw out. Uh, he's probably going to win, but probably going to be too short of a price for me to like. So uh, he, he's, you know, and I do, I, I put more stock in Briz's speed figures than anybody else's. Um, and, uh, and he's a standout on those. So uh, maybe something could happen. Now, last week, uh, and unfortunately, I did not connect, even though uh, I had Dorth, Dorth Vader is a B. So mm -hmm. I felt like I really missed an opportunity. Uh, but the pick ends, whether it was the coast to coast, uh, the pick five at Gulfstream, that went through Forte paid awesome. Obviously, Dorth Vader mm. was part of that. Maybe there's an opportunity there, and certainly don't want to draw the ire of ITP, who I know uh, you're hoping to speak with later. Uh, now, we didn't make a case against Tapa Trice. We're just right. worried he's going to be an underlay. My fair odds are nine to five. So if he's in that even money range, certainly not a win bet. But I feel on these big days where there legitimately is casual money, especially in a, in a pick five pool with a low takeout, if I'm against, let's say, two other favorites, or if there is maybe another 20, 30 to one horse lurking, I still think there's opportunity, even though he's underlaid in the win pool. I agree. Yeah. So I don't, this is a race I would not get involved in vertically at all, but I, you know, that if I'm right, if my memory is right, the three-year-old Philly grass race is right before this one. That's and right. I, lo I looked over it. And at this point, I think there's an opportunity for some, some prices. So, um, yeah, they you know, got 14 with two AEs. So. Yeah. And, and some of them are, young developing horses and you know so so i think that there's a possibility uh to uh to, to run something into the tambay derby in, in cash okay so oh. sam f davis were you there that day i wasn't uh, okay. and, but uh you know i played that day and it was actually the worst the worst day i had in about 18 months i was it, it had me talking to myself actually uh was talking to beam because i was it was like when you're a boxer and you walk into a punch and the guy just hits you square in the face and i was like what <laughs> i just you know forget so i had to write the ship after that but uh but i did i did play in tampa and i've done some work on the sam davis so my question with it and uh one of the things person that has I, I noticed looking at the tampa bay derby yesterday especially uh they designated it a, a fast pace mm. uh and usually when you have, you know, you heard that day, uh, you know, supposed speed bias, and we saw that maybe in the three-year-old Philly race, you definitely wanted to be forward. Mm -hmm. uh, usually when you have a bias and a fast pace and a horse like Litigate from a powerful barn, that's the recipe for a big overinflated figure. And yet it came back super slow. Like 
really bad. Like not yeah. even contention for a, a potential derby win in my mind. So to me, something has to give. If if it really was a fast pace on a biased track, my thought is maybe it actually was a, a little faster, albeit aided by those things, or maybe it wasn't so much a bias and these were just slow horses all together and you toss the race completely. Do you have a lean or what are you doing with those horses here? Yeah. So I think that's a good question. And it's, it's, it's really a weird situation. So it was a day when we were expecting a lot of rain. And so they rolled the track and you could tell the inside was really good. Um, all day, the inside was really good. I don't know that it was speed, but it was the, the rail was tight. And so, um, you know, obviously that's what, it, Sibelius was in the sprint is a nice horse, but set unbelievable fractions and still won on the inside while getting pressed. And then the same thing happened with Bennett's horse winning the Philly race going long. Um, and then it started to monsoon about 10 minutes before the Tam or the Sam Davis. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened, uh, but uh, you know, I watched the replay a bunch I still think the inside was very good for the Sam Davis. I don't think it was speed, but I think the inside was good. And if you watch the ride that uh, Saez put on Litigate, he cleared, got to the inside, then sat behind the speed. Um, but the way that I look at it, I don't want any horse that was on the inside. In this, I don't, I don't know if the Sam Davis was any good, but if I do want any horses, I don't want any of them who are on the inside. Um, uh, Hardy's horse, the Godolphin horse, uh, Groveland is in this race and he sat on the rail the whole time. And I think that he got, he got the run of the race last time. Horse is going to be long this time. So I, I, I wouldn't use him anyway. Uh, if there's any horse that I think had the bad trip, it, uh, was Mott's horse, uh, that Irad happens to be on this time. And, uh, that would be That's probably... Yeah, that'd probably be classic legacy. Probably be the only horse that I would consider coming out of the, the Sam Davis because he had a wide trip the whole time and was still churning on and passing horses at the end. But that it's that's kind of my take. I'm eager to see what Irad does. So when I initially went through the race, I actually shame on me <laughs> didn't notice uh, that. The, the jockey change and Alvarado has certainly had a share of big wins for the Mott barn, uh, but very few riders. It's not an upgrade when Hyrad gets aboard from someone else. So uh, that's noticeable. And if he's able to get this horse to be closer as he was in the maiden breaker that was on the slop, uh, he's a little more interesting. I had a stat at Tampa Bay. You know the track a lot better than I do. I'm just looking at numbers. You can maybe shed some perspective on this. Since February 1st, 0 for 36, dirt routes, horses, four lengths or more off the lead, 0 for 36. That, to me, is to the point where you're starting to think, okay, can you come from that far off? Classic Legacy has been able to track in a sprint, no less, a one-turn longer sprint. So maybe he's closer with Irad aboard. Uh, but if he's as far back as he was in his other three races, it's a big downgrade for me. Yeah, um, it looks to me like the horse had a couple of tight workouts since his last race. And uh, they put the screws to the horse. You know, I would prefer to bet it if it had Alvarado on it. Not because he's a better rider, but because the price would be better. Uh, Irad's going to attract a lot of people just from his name it, it, right. against these Tampa jockeys. Um, I think it'll probably have to be closer. And if you're going to beat tap at trice, you're going to have to be in front of him. You're not going to outkick him. So I thought that this horse might have a chance. But Groveland, who I actually personally thought was the second most likely winner, but you poo pooed. Looks like 12 to 1 on the HRN right. line. We'll see. I, now, you don't like the horse to begin with, but I am curious what you think because we look at a lot of these. Triple crown prep races, just the nature of the beast is what people talk about. Why would a Colt that they put into the Sam F. Davis that clearly by street sense out of a medallion door, America Dolphin, why would this Colt not be nominated to the Triple Crown? Mm. How does yeah. the Dolphin not spend $600? I don't get it. Yeah, unless they just, you know, uh, Hardy's their you know, 
fourth or fifth line trainer. So unless right. they just <laughs> don't nominate anything they send to him, I don't know, you know, but you would think that it would be carte blanche, just all of their horses right. get nominated. Uh, other than him, I guess it would be classic legacy in terms of who could actually make a dent going forward on the Derby trail as well. Uh, so kind of a, a repeat of the fountain of youth in that regard, Pletcher Mott, anyone else, I would probably just write off the field and say, well, we didn't see the Derby winner there. Yeah. I don't, uh, this, this, uh, you know, a lot of the preps so far haven't been strong, you know, to me, the, the fairgrounds uh, preps have been amazing and everything else has been kind of average or below average. Even, you know, last week at the, the, the race in Miami that Forte won, you know, there was, there were some bad horses in that race. So, you know, um, uh, there's a horse that interesting in this race that I don't know, you know, so I, Originally, I thought, well, classic legacy. Then I saw that the field didn't really have much depth to it, and I knew he would get—he's going to get played. So, um, the, uh, the the horse in the one hole, Lord Miles. It's interesting to me. Um, so, the the horse was bet in the Holy Bull. I think it was the Holy Bull. Yeah, and. Yeah, we if you watch his previous race, the Macho Man, uh, the Mucho Macho Man, he 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 took himself out of the race. He was way in the back, just kind of like lollygagging, lost in the race, and just comes thundering home and passes them all after the wire. And uh, he's a curlin, supposed to go along. Um, so they put blinkers on him and he draws the rail on the Holy Bull. And they figured the blinkers might keep him more focused and keep him in the race a little bit longer. And that way he's not up against it when it's time to make his run. He just never looked comfortable from the rail uh, to me, you know, because that when they start those races at the turn in Miami, it's interesting because if you're too far out, you get parked. But if you're inside, you just eat dirt the whole way right and so i don't know i mean i ride gets off the horse so that means something but also means your price is going to be bigger paco yeah. is, is fine um and then you know safi instead of running him last week and i guess was it the fountain of youth or whatever it was um he, he saves him for this spot which tells me that because if you win the tampa derby you're going to the kentucky derby you get the points to get in so I thought, well, maybe, you know, so they take the blinkers off. The horse gets on the rail. Um, if he's a price, I could bet him, you know, and I, and, and if I, and, if, and I will have him on probably all my uh, horizontals, but I don't, and I don't love the horse. Right. No, he's uh, 15 to one's our, our stab at the morning line and would think it's absolutely not going to be any lower than that. So mm -hmm. uh, 20, is reasonable and uh, you, you know you'll you'll get the ground saving and you know with Paco you just hope to be in contention to get maximum effort late because you know <laughs> he might not ride for third if he's beaten ten right. but uh, that that's certainly one that that could spice things up underneath um, you know I think I mentioned Groveland kind of it caught my eye uh, other than that though this is definitely the type of race where I'm, you know, would love to catch a, you know, 20, $30 horse in two of the races preceding and just watch and, you know, hope the six to five obliges as John Dooley would say, uh, I would say Zydeco is maybe my horse that I really, you know, from a win perspective, cause I think he'll have company up front and that outside post isn't ideal for a gate to wire threat. Uh, but, but of the speed horses, maybe he can he can hold on and, and still get a slice at a bigger price than some of the others. But I just really think from an opportunity standpoint, it's and I haven't looked at the other four races preceding it, but lock in on some of the prices I like there. Gamble a little bit that you can catch a 20, 30 or more dollar winner and let it ride on Tampa Trice. Yeah, there's, there's a, uh, you know, it's interesting this year at Tampa. I don't know what's going on. You know, I asked uh, my buddy Stefan, who's paid more attention to Gulfstream. Um, it seems to me like Chad is not winning like he used to at Tampa. If he came to Tampa, the horse was a monster. And oh, just, yeah. It, it, 
It was and, like when he would ship to Monmouth for a turf stakes. Yeah, and he has an even with his maidens and whatever. So, you know, I didn't know if he was sending more of his uh, A team down to Gulfstream since they got the new turf installed or if he just doesn't have the stock that he used to. But um, he's disappointed me a few times. And so with that in mind, you know, if his horses are taking money in those turf stakes races, I, you know, I might take a crack against him. Sure. Yeah. And I haven't uh, seen how many are in, but yeah, he, he supports the program there for sure. And mm-hmm. similar to Irad getting aboard. I mean, and, and in fact, just kind of scrolling to find one, there's a horse in the uh, Florida Oaks Ortiz getting the mount from Pratt for Chad Brown. First time Lasix. I mean, that's just, that, that checks all the boxes for mm-hmm. over that, whether or not mm-hmm. the horse fits or not. So right, absolutely. Opportunity. Well, uh, enjoy it out there. What do they put, put on a spread food trucks and all that? Oh, it's a big, it's a good time. It's, it, it'll be packed. Tampa's a great track for people to go. It's, it's a, it's a really good time. It's a, it's a fun place and um, it should be really good weather. There's supposed to be a, a little bit of rain that comes through Friday. So it should be in the mid seventies Saturday. Love it. All yeah. right. Well, Nico. Yeah. Appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, Listen Ed. Listen to him and uh, Uncle Bill on Spaces Thursday nights. Hopefully a good show this evening. You won't get to see what they're wearing because it's all audio. Mm-hmm. So glad to glad to rep stock the pace here. Yeah. I wore, I wore an academia shirt uh, <laughs> to be simpatico, but uh, yeah. also I think I look good in red. So that was part of it too. But Sounds appreciate good. the time and best all of right, luck Saturday. You too. Thanks. Take care.